Hello everyone, this is DA from E Academy. And in the previous video, we have talked about the force vector uh, in the element level equation. And we are done with our second step that is derived, deriving the eth level equations. So now if we combine all of these things, um, the element level stiffness matrix as well as the element level force vector. So we will be having this kind of a linear system. So here we have a linear one dimensional element F finite element method model for an eth element. This uh, equation, this differential equation and this system both are equivalent discrete system of equations of a single element, right? So this here is the stiffness matrix. We have a displacement vector and we have a force vector. So this is for a linear system. That's why we have two cross two matrices here. We have two cross two cross one uh, vector and same here. We have a two cross one vector for the force vector and a displacement vector. When we are in the quadratic one dimension element, uh, then we will having a three cross three stiffness matrix with one uh, with three cross one displacement vector as well as three cross one force vectors. So now we're moving toward our third step, that is assembly phase, assembly to get the global level equation. So let's start. So far we have talked about the eth level or the element. Uh, level equation. Now we have to uh, make a connection of the local coordinate system with the global coordinate system. So the derived equation are of an eth level in the local coordinate system. For example, we have this whole system with two elements, which implies that we have three global nodes and two local nodes, right? So in the assembly phase, the first, the first thing that is very important or the main consideration uh, in this process is to keep the primary variable that is the displacement variable we have, uh, it should be continuous at the physical connected points because this element is connected to this element with this node. So here the U, the displacement of this, of element one and element two should have the same value in order to be continuous. For example, this is element one, so this is one of x and for this this is element two of x this should be equal in order to be continuous at the physical connected nodes we are assuming here two elements so let's suppose uh, so we will going to write this whole equation for the first element and then for the second element now this is the first element so let me write e1 here this is the first element this is the second element now we have to write this whole equation that have a stiffness matrix, a displacement vector, as well as the force vector for an element one. And here in our system, we don't have any external stiffness. So we can eliminate this part because C is representing an external stiffness. So uh, this whole part is equal to zero because our system is of all of the external stiffnesses. So for element one, we will be having two cross two stiffness matrix like this. The first element that would be general k11 and because it is for the first element so one is representing at the superscript and that would be and this would be for minus one it should be one two and again one on the superscript representing that this is element one this should be two one again element one minus one and here it is and it is two two and for the element one. So we are done with the element one stiffness matrix without having a external stiffness. And now we have this, our displacement vector, that is U1 for element one and U2 for element one. This is the same thing here. And if we are going to write the force vector here for element one because this is this whole part is q that we have talked about in our previous video so this is q1 for the element one plus capital q1 for the element one and the same case q2 for the element one and plus q2 for the element one so this is for uh the element one 
what we have done here, here A, we are assuming that that this uh, Kij, the element of the stiffest matrix, is for the first element, that is A1 by H1. For the element 1, Aj, we know that K, what is small k means, small k is equal to this A having a superscript of 1 divided by H having a subscript of 1 representing that it is for element 1. So this small k is representing this and this Q, small q is representing Fh by 2. So this is for element 1 and the same we can write it for element 2, just the difference would be here in the superscript we will be writing 2 here for the element 2. And the rest of the things would be same. So here we are, the stiffest matrix for the element 2, the displacement vector, and the force vector for an element 2. Now, if we are going, because these all are in the local coordinate system right now, we are going to make it in a global coordinate system. So if we're starting from this stiffest matrix, only this part and this part, now what we are going to do, because node Two of the first element is coinciding with the node one of the second element, which implies that all the k values, all the a by h values that are on the second node of the element one are adding with the magnitude of a by h of node one of the second element. So we are going to combine, we are going to assemble the stiffness matrix into a global coordinate system. So now it would be like this. Initially, we will be having this value. So this is k11 for an element 1. This would be minus k12 for an element 1. Because this is for the element 1, the third node having no effect of the stiffest matrix for the first element. So it would be 0 here. Then we have minus k21 for the first element and then k22 for the first element. Now here we are on this point. Here k22 must be added with the k11 for the second element. So this k value must be added with k11 for the second element and then here minus k12 for the second element. Now this second element has nothing to do with the first node of the first element so this would be 0 and here we are with minus k21 of the second element and k22 for the second element. So now we have this global stiffness matrix for uh, so we can replace the names according to the desire according to the situation that we have because this is an element level stiffness matrix. Now this is an assembled form of the element level uh, stiffness matrix for all of the structure or all of the body that we have. So this is in a global coordinate system now because we can replace uh, the values by the thing and we will be doing boundary conditions on this matrix that we have in a symbol form and the same thing we will be doing and the same stuff we will be doing on the uh, displacement and the force vector as well so now let's look at the displacement and the force vectors then how we can assemble local and element level things to make it in a global matrix. So in, in a global coordinate system, we have three displacement values. Here, this is U1. So let's like write it here. In a global way, we have U1, U2, and U3. In a local coordinate system, we have U1, U2, U1, and U2. Right? U1 for the first node, u1 for the second node, u2 for the first node, and u2 for the second node. Now, because we have talked about the continuity uh, property of this um, assembly phase, that if we are going to assemble them, the displacement vectors, the displacement values should be continuous, having the same value at the connected physical connected points. So here we can we can say that the capital U1 that is on the global thing is, is equal to, because this is here U1, is equal to U1 for the first node. That is obvious. And the same goes for the force vector. The force vector on the first node, we are combining the both, both forces 
Q1 and capital Q1. So this is equal to the Q1 plus Q1 that is in general. Because if displacement vector is U1 globally, right? So the force vector would be also global. Q1, small Q1, capital Q1 for this, small Q2, capital Q2 for this, and small Q3 and capital Q3 for this in a global system, right? And this is the local system or the local representation of the forces that we have. So this is for the element level one. The same we can write that this is the capital U2, the capital U2 is equal to U2 for the first element and the same case for the force that is Q2 for the first element, Q2 for the first element that should be equal to Q2 plus Q2 that is in the global system, right? And, and the same thing can be true for the second element. So let's write it for the second element. This is globally U2. So U2 should be equal to U1 for the second element. And the same thing would be true for Q1 and Q2 for the second element. It should be Q1 because the force is 1 here. Is equal to the globally. Globally it is Q2 plus capital Q2. And Q3 is equal to U2 for the second element and same goes for here for this element. This is Q3 plus Q3. So this is how the continuity works in this case. The local node numbering and the global node numbering. Here that we have, if we have no superscript, we have a global coordinate system. We have a global numbering. When we have superscript, that is representing the element level thing. So these all are in the local uh, numbering. These two things, this U1, U2, and U3, Q1, Q2, and Q3 are all in the global numbering. So here we are making connection with the global numbering and the local numbering in order to make them work and assemble them in, an, uh, in a matrix. So now we're going to assemble it. The assembling phase would be simple for the displacement vector because we only need to write U1, U2 and U3 because globally we have three nodes, globally we have three displacement vectors, right? U1, U2 and U3. And for the force vector it is also simple because we have Q1, Q2 and Q3 globally and small Q1 is also ranging from 1 and 3 and capital Q1 is also ranging from 1 to 3. So that is why the force vector would be the same as well. Here this is a, uh, no, U is not equal to F, but K, this difference matrix that we have derived just yet, is equal to small Q1, cap, small Q3, plus capital Q1, capital Q2, and capital Q3. So this would be the um, assembled form of the stiffness matrix, one-dimensional stiffness matrix, in which we have only two nodes that we have a linear element. So this is the assembled form of the stiffest matrix, the displacement vector and the force vector we have. In the next step, this form is very important in order to imply the boundary conditions. So we will be jumping toward the next step of the boundary conditions and we'll see how the stiffest matrix and the assembly form will help us uh, in order to figure out the approximate solution of the equation. So this is for now. If you're looking for more such videos, then you can subscribe to this channel to watch more upcoming videos. We will meet in the next video. Till then, take care. Goodbye.